Namaskaram everyone and welcome back in today's video where we are delving into a profound exploration led by Sadhguru. Prepare to embark on a journey that challenges everything you thought you knew about yourself. In this enlightening discussion, Sadhguru unravels the illusion of our attachment to the body and mind, offering profound insights on transcending these limitations. Get ready to expand your consciousness and discuss Discover the boundless potential of your true self. Stay tuned as Sadhguru shared his wisdom on the journey beyond the body and mind, revealing the keys to liberation and self-realization. Let's dive in into the mysteries of existence together with Sadhguru. What does it mean by saying this is the last life, after this is moksha, freedom? Moksha means freedom or liberation. What is the bondage? Please understand that. What is the bondage in your life? Hmm? Body, what else? No, those are secondary. Only because you have a… you are attached to your body, you are attached to some body. Please see that. If you are not attached to this body, you will not attach… you will not be attached to any body. It's not possible. Only because of your attachment to this body, you are getting attached to other bodies. You say, my family, the only thing that you know actually about them is their body, please see. Because it's only from your attachment to your body that is happening. You know a little bit of their emotion and thought, but that is only in reflection of the body, please see. The fundamental is the body, isn't it? Isn't it so? The most fundamental is body, please see. Today, the deepest attachment between people come in man-woman relationship, isn't it? Why? Because of the body. Where bodies are touching has become the deepest attachment, isn't it? This is simply because right now people are existing as body. For them, truly opening up to somebody means opening up the body, nothing else. Because they cannot open up anywhere else. What else they can open? Huh? Not really, mind is never open. People are talking about open mind, there is no such thing. Mo mind is a closed end always. They believe it's open for comfort's sake. Tell me how will you open your mind? Tell me how will you open your mind? Hmm? How will you become silent? <laughs> no. No, these are all ways of really closing your mind. The people who believe they're very honest, very sincere, please see they're very closed in many ways, the so-called good people. They believe they are very open. They, s they always claim I am an open book. The thing is, everything that they know, they are open to others. They don't know much about themselves. They, they have not even opened the book to themselves. How can they open it to somebody else? They have not even admitted fundamental facts about life with themselves. Whatever they have seen, they have admitted to other people. But they have not even admitted to themselves. They can't believe. When life really puts them in turmoil and they act in certain ways, good people are always shocked with themselves. The so-called bad person who is out on the street, he has admitted it to himself, okay? All the nonsense that he is, he's admitted to himself. He is not stupid enough to admit it to somebody else. <laughs> he is careful about that. But the good person has not even admitted it to himself, his own problems, his own limitations. So he thinks he's an open book. The book is not even open to him. Where is the question of opening it to somebody? There is no such thing as open mind because mind is a closed possibility. It is an accumulation, isn't it? What are you going to open in this? What are you going to open in this? What is there to see anyway? You have, in, uh, you have attached an enormous amount of importance to your mind, I know. But please look at it sincerely, what is there in your mind apart from what you gathered from outside? What is there in your mind, why should I look into your mind? I can look around the world and I know what is there. Why should I look through the distortion of your mind? Isn't it? Electricity. Electricity was always there in your body, every moment. Your body doesn't move a limb without electricity. One heart do beat does not happen without electricity. If you had just looked in, you would know electricity very easily, okay? You're talking about internet. Internet has always been there. For example, 
I am completely uneducated, if you ask me, spiritually. I have never read anything, I have kept myself away from all scriptures always. But never have I been ever put into a situation where I have to think what to do, I always know what to do. Because there is an internet of its own. If you are open, it's always available. The internet was always there, only now you are you know, transmitting other kind of information on your internet. Otherwise, internet has always been there, much bigger than the net that you have. Everything that's worth knowing is right here. It's… it's all there. You only just observe something and put it in a different application, that's all, isn't it? Your internet is not even bigger than your brain, isn't it so? Yes or no? So, it is just a small replica of this, isn't it? just a different application for what was already there. Tell me what is one new idea you've had? Everything that creation has, you are just imitating in small ways, that's all, isn't it? Yes or no? What is there in creation, you are just imitating in little, little ways. It's fine, it's good you're doing it, but don't think you invented, you know, created something new, no. You're just finding different applications for what was already there. Breath does not mean air, this must be understood. When we say breath, if we talk from the point of your experience, what is right now binding you to your body is your breath. If I take away your breath, your body will fall down, isn't it? You and your body will get separated if I just take away your breath. So one way of understanding breath is to see it as a thread which binds you and your body. On one level, all yogic practices are devised. Whatever you may be doing, fundamentally it is devised to make you experience, I am not the body, I am not the mind. Because whatever kind of suffering you have, whatever kind of problems you have with life, it's either of the body or of the mind, isn't it so? Yes? Do you have any other problem? Any other kind of suffering have you known? It's just either of this or that. So various methods are employed to bring you to a living experience. If you think I am not the body, if you think I am not the mind, it is not enough. When life threatens you, you will see all your thoughts will disappear and you'll <laughs> react the way you will have to react. But if it's a living experience for you, if you sit here, you have a clear experience, I am not this. Then the very perspective with which you perceive life is very different. If you're sitting here and you know experientially, like right now you know that you're here, you simply know that I am not this, not because you're thinking. See, what you know by thought is different. What you simply know is different. Do you know the difference? Yes? What you have accumulated and think about is knowledge, it is not knowing. Knowing is simply you know that you're here. <coughs> you don't have to think that I'm here, isn't it? Yes? You know that you exist. You don't have to think that I exist. Though somebody said I exist because I'm thinking. <laughs> it doesn't matter. European philosophy. <coughs> In your experience, whatever you simply know, that is the reality. Thought is not reality because today your thoughts will say one thing, tomorrow they will say something totally different. If you have an evolving mind, you will see at different stages in your life, your thought has made you believe this is it. Tomorrow it will make you like a fool for believing what you believe today. Has it happened to you? Only if you're stuck in your head, all your life you got the same thought. <laughs> if you have an evolving mind, every other day your thought will come up with something new and make you like feel like a fool for what you thought yesterday, isn't it? So, your thought is not dependable. It is useful if you know how to use it, but it's not dependable if you're seeking to know what is true. So, when we say breath, we are not talking about the air that you breathe. The process of breathing is much more than air. 
It is not the air which is forcing itself into your body and coming out. Because there is a process of breathing, air is going in and coming out, isn't it? Isn't it so? Because there is a certain process called breathing, because of that the air is going in and coming out. Air is only the medium. The breath is that which binds you to this body. As we come to the end of this enlightening discussion with Sadhguru, let's take a moment to reflect on the profound wisdom he shared. Throughout our journey, Sadhguru shed light on the illusion of our attachment to the body and mind. He reminded us that fundamentally all yogic practices aim to awaken our awareness that we can not merely the body or the mind. This realization opens door to a deeper understanding of our true nature and potential. As we observe these teachings, let's carry them with us into our daily life. Let's cultivate mindfulness and awareness, allowing us to navigate the complexities of existence with grace and clarity. Remember, this journey is ongoing and each step we take brings us closer to self-realization and liberation. Thank you so much for joining on this transformative journey with Sadhguru. This is not a summary of Sadhguru's word. It is simply my interpretation of the deep wisdom he imparted. Kindly keep these two separated and do not misunderstand. Thank you for your presence and dedication to self-discovery. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, please take care. Namaskar.